Hey guys, I'm back, so I'm not sure what that was. One second. But you guys see in the title four things to consider for your business for 2020. And so often, you know, these things are overlooked in our pursuit, um, in our mindset about earning more money and doing bigger things in our business. And I've learned and I know to be true. And I actually, I actually love the fact that I've learned this particular principle as it relates to my business. Because many of you have heard the phrase, less is more. If you've heard that phrase before, be sure to put that in the comments. Say, I've heard the phrase, less is more. I want to share with you guys four things to consider as it relates to your business for 2020. And in my work with entrepreneurs, I work with highly driven women entrepreneurs. I mean, like really highly driven. I, I mean, they're doing amazing things. And a lot of the things they're doing, they're doing them in shorter amount of time than the average person. And like myself, I'm highly driven and I can go at a task and just hit that thing head on and keep going, going, going. But I also understand that uh, the quality at which I do it changes when I do too much. I'm a committer. So if, if, if I've committed to this project, then I'm doing everything in me to make it happen. And those are great qualities. Those are great work. That's great work ethic. But depending on what your vision is for your, your life and your business, sometimes that work ethic that's go, 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 uh, will have us working on routine things that don't actually allow us to grow. And I want to talk about four things that are important for you to consider as you are thinking about the growth of your business for 2020. If this is your first time on a broadcast with me, where have you been all of your life? You've been missing out. I'm Tanya Wilson-Cherry. I'm a growth strategist, business coach, and mentor to women service-based business owners those and those who aspire to teach, train, and coach. It is my heart. It is my assignment to see people receive transformation as stepping into um, bigger futures and the highest version of themselves. So that's my heart. In the fullness of everything that I do behind it is my desire to see people's lives transform them stepping into bigger visions and bigger spaces of possibility for themselves. And I do that through my coaching and consulting. I focus from a three-point perspective of abundance, mindset, personal growth, and business building, and branding, building, and profiting are my babies, right? So I help uh, women service-based business owners do that by helping them create systems that allow their business to fund their lifestyle and not run their lifestyle. So important, guys. We're, we're gonna, what I'm going to share with you on today relates heavily to you know building a business that funds your lifestyle and not runs your lifestyle because i see so many people burn out highly driven ambitious women like yourself burn out the way that they're building their business and i share with you as we first came on that less is more and it's sometimes hard to see that when we are wanting to grow our business or wanting to earn more in our business. But I want you to understand that growing your business or earning more in your business doesn't necessarily mean more work. And although there may be, especially if you're implementing a new system that's going to eventually allow you to earn more revenue, there may be more work up front. But the purpose of putting the system in place is so that there's less work on the back end. And while you are uh, implementing the systems or putting the systems in place, for instance, I um, a recent call, <clears throat> we were talking about the fact that I realized that my client um, in, because this is what happens mentally for us. We know that new project is going to cost a little more coin, right? It's going to cost a little more dough. Um, and 
in the fact that we know that we sometimes begin to do even more busy work thinking that it's going to produce <clears throat> the revenue that's needed for the new thing. But what actually happens is we burn out in the process and we're so fo focused on earning more that we don't put our focus in a space that allows us to grow. And there's a difference. So I want you to ask yourself, when you think about what you've been doing for 2019, so you have this goal that you're working on for your life and your business. You want to grow in some aspect. Um, ask yourself this question, have I been focusing on earning more or growing? Earning more or growing? And this is what that this looks like. So maybe you're a coach, consultant, a personal stylist, a stylist, you know, you service a, a client in the marketplace. And so because you have this new project that you're wanting to do, of course, you're like, OK, I'm going to need more revenue for that in order to maintain my lifestyle while I'm getting this other thing. But if you're not careful, you will focus so much on earning more revenue that the time that it takes to put the new system or the new thing that you want to do in place is eaten away by all of the busy work that you're actually doing. So the number one thing I want you to think about as you move into um, 2020 and you're you know, just looking at what you really want and desire for your business, are you focusing on time to earn or are you focusing on time to grow? If it's new staff that you need, maybe um, I'm working on a, a 30 day system with one of my clients who will be uh, bringing on new staff into her business. Um, um, papers that she's going to need for tax purposes. There are some systems, orientation process, handbook, things of that nature that she needs to get in place prior to, you know, bringing someone on so that, you know, everything is kind of flowing. And we, we came to the conclusion that she's got to take some time away for a moment, right? From doing the activities that are requiring her to trade her time for dollars as much, right? Not, she's not going to stop those things, but she is going to have to, um, one second. I'm sharing this out. Thank you for your patience. She is going to have to have the time to grow and growing would be maybe slowing up on some of that, you know, I don't want to say grind, but some of the trading time for dollars that's spent in the earning space in order to implement the systems that are actually going to allow the business to grow. And, you know, what happens, we take on all of these projects that never relieve us of any of the responsibilities, whether it's hiring a VA, um, hiring someone to help you with your social media, a coach, a consultant, somebody, right? An assistant, an administrative assistant, whatever it, it is that you need, you do have to make some type of sacrifice either with your time, your money, your energy, your resources when you're wanting to grow. And I, wanna, I want to challenge you to think about what because what happens is it becomes the cycle that, that you go through because you're on a grind so much and you're spending more time on earning than you are on growing. And they're two separate things. Number two, I am so in alignment with creating futures bigger than your past. It means everything to me. I made a post the other day called Limitless Living. And I said, what does that feel like to you when you hear the words limitless living? How do you feel? For me, I get chills. I, I mean, I'm empowered uh, to want to do more, be more, have more, um, share more, give more. Those words are empowering to me. But at the same time that I'm trying to, let's see. Okay, I'm getting it together over here, coppers. At the same time that I 
you know, continue to move into the space of what I call limitless living, where we have immeasurable amounts of freedom um, in our life and our business, I'm also aware that whatever it is that I desire to do, I need to know what is going to be required in order to make that happen. So many of you are thinking of open a second location or a third location or something else, but all of those require time. And it's important that you take the time to actually, you know, write it down on paper and make it plain so that it makes sense. Scripture says, who builds a house without counting the cost? And so I don't want you guys to get inundated with your ideas to the point that you miss the planning and the strategy because it's important. And a lot of things burn because there was no planning. And that reminds me, I am actually hosting um, a workshop, a virtual workshop, because I see this so much and I want to help on uh, creating goals that matter and manifest matter and manifest and they matter to what your overall vision is and that they're actually manifesting because some of your goals aren't manifesting because you got too many pots on the stove right and you're trying to handle and shuffle them all right so i want you guys to join me that's on and it's completely complimentary i know that there are different levels to goal setting and when we don't understand the levels to goal setting we'll set goals that um they just become things that we write on paper over and over again. And I don't want you to go into the new year that way. So I'm going to be sharing um, concepts and principles and tools that I've been teaching for almost a decade to corporate entities um, for leadership workshops, my own coaching programs and systems that help me not only create goals that matter to my vision, right, but goals that also manifest. You can go to bit.ly slash 2020 MGM to sign up for that webinar. But whatever it is that you're desiring to do, have you properly planned it out? Have you said, it's, okay, this is going to require this of me. This is going to require that of me. I'm going to need this piece of information. In a recent consult, we talked about some of the paperwork that would be needed. And, you know, the idea was to start immediately. But when we looked at what she has going on and what is needed, it's a 30-day time frame at minimal to get the thing in motion, right, with dates. So the number two thing is, what is the task that you want to do going to require? Um, for whatever reason, what just came to my mind, and I've worked with several people who are personal stylists or they have uh, clothing boutiques and things of that nature, and there's a lot of money being left on the table because this very part was left out of the process. It was like, boom, I'm just going to start, right? Or maybe a vision got switched from wanting to be a personal stylist to now I'm just, you know, selling clothes because there wasn't a plan of action that was mapped out. People are missing money because there's no website and, you know, the process that the clients are having to go through in order to get the items is unconventional. And it doesn't mean that people won't do it, but you want to think about, am I maximizing the opportunity? And you do that because you, you got a plan, right? So figure out what the tasks that you want to do for the new year, what do they require? The third thing is your top five values. I've been talking about this for years. I've been giving you all the free nuggets. Not sure if you've been writing it down and actually applying it because implementation is one of the areas that many entrepreneurs lack. So we hear a great broadcast, we hear something, you know, we get chills and goosebumps, and then we never implement, right? So we're just filled with all of this information, right? Like information hoarding, but the results aren't lining up with the amount of information that we have because of lack of imp implementation. So I've shared this several times, and when I tell you it's a key, it's probably what's considered a soft skill. So most of us focus on hard skills. Um, as we're building our business, but some of the soft skills are things like having a vision, having a mission, understanding your values. When you understand your top five values, it's going to create the culture of your business. It's going to impact the brand of your business. It's going to impact everything you do, the team members that you hire, how you flow, how you finagle, what opportunities you take and don't take. If you get clear on what your top five values are, you can kind of run your baby based on that. You can do interviews based on your top five values. You can hire based on your top five values, right? You can build your business based on your top five values. 
I look at my top five values before I take an opportunity, before I do a new project. Time freedom is so important to me and financial freedom. I want the coin, okay? You got to get the coin. But there are several things in my top five values that I just run through the list when an opportunity presents itself or even when one of my big ideas comes to play. I say, how is this going to impact the top five things that I value or the top five values that my business represents? So the third thing I want you to consider, if you haven't, if you've heard me say this before and it sounds like repeat information to you and you ain't done nothing about it, it's time for you to implement. Actually take five minutes, guys, get a pen and a piece of paper. If you come on with me anyway, I'm always going to drop money nuggets. I'm always going to drop abundance nuggets. If you plan to watch one of my trainings, have pen and paper in hand. So there may be one thing that will change the trajectory of your business that I will say each and every time that you come on if you implement it. If you take it serious and not just information that, you know, you're just watching people for or me for entertainment, but watch me and be empowered to actually change your life. Because not only... Uh, is transformation really big for me when I'm working with my private clients? But I also know that there are people who are going to come on whose lives can be transformed and uh, the whole trajectory of their business and their thought process can change if they actually implement or do the things that I'm sharing. So the third thing, I'm going to say it one more time, your top five values, what are they? Get really, really clear on that and then begin to build based on your top five values. And number four, the last thing, four things to consider as it relates to your business and moving into 2020, the year of the mouth, what you say, what you're affirming, what you're talking about. The fourth thing is what is in your hand? What's in your hand? I like to focus on maximizing. So many times we want to do 20 different new things I've been guilty right? Until I learned how to set goals that matter and manifest. Until I began following my own tools, strategies, and processes. We'll have something in our hand that is amazing. So uh, recently I did an affirmation guide. Affirmations are something I've been saying for years, guys. It's so much of who I am. It took, it didn't take a lot of time right? Well, it took all of the years that I've been doing it, all of the experience, but to actually create the product, it didn't. And that one thing has led to several other different things because it was what was in me. It was what was in my hand. It was real to me. It was something I had mastered. So I'm asking you today, what is in your hand? As you go into 2020, you may not necessarily need to create 20 different things or buy 20 different pieces of equipment. You may need more information about something you already have and how to implement it so that it creates more revenue for you that allows you to uh, fund your lifestyle and not run your lifestyle with all of the busy stuff. I'm going to do a recap. Four things to consider in 2020 for your business. One, are you spending the majority of your time? Hey, Tanisha, how are you, dear? Are you spending the majority of your time to earn money or to grow? There's a time and a season for both. There are times where you just really need to earn money. But if it's a new thing that you need to do that's going to help your business grow, so maybe you need to hire a team. And in order to hire a team, even if it's just a virtual assistant, there are some systems and processes you need to put in place before bringing that team member on, right? But because you, your focus time has been on earning money, you won't take the time to do the thing that's actually going to grow the business and bring increase. Take a moment. Look at how your process has been going. Have I been focusing so much on earning revenue, on you know time to earn, that I haven't spent time to grow? And there's a difference. Number two, what does the task that you're wanting to do for 2020, that thing that you want to see happen or transpire, what does it require? What is the plan? I invited you all to a complimentary webinar on this Monday. Um, I'm going to teach you how to create goals that matter and manifest. bit.ly slash 2020MGM. Tanisha Darling, bit.ly slash 2020MGM. Uh, you got to join me. It's complimentary. I just want to see people create goals that actually matter to their vision and their purpose and what they really want for their life 
and actually manifest. I'm going to teach you some of the things and strategies that I use in order to see my goals manifest and why things are in alignment and I can tell when they're off and I can shift quickly so that it matches what I really desire for my life and my business so that my business is funding my lifestyle and not running my lifestyle. I'll be teaching those strategies and systems on the 30th. Uh, I think it's 12, 30 p.m., but you could sign up. It's completely complimentary. What does the task require that you have? We're going to have a full-on planning session so you can throw out there what it is that you want to do, and I'm going to actually strategize, tell you what you're going to need in order to make that happen, and then you can process it and say, okay, I need to shift my schedule around like this so that I can implement it or this isn't really what I thought it was going to be. This may not be something that I want to do because people are spending so much time on things that they, they don't align with their life and their business and they don't find that out until they get like in the thick of it, right? And then they feel like they got to just hold on to it even if it's not in alignment. But if you're strategizing and planning properly, you can eliminate some of the stuff that you think you want to do. I'm going to tell you what came to mind. How many of you put me in the comments if you've ever had this big idea that you wanted to do and then when you started doing it, you was like, mm, that don't work for me. Put me in the comments if you've ever done that. This is why I talk about vision all the time, guys, because if you're clear on what you want for your life and your business, your vision begins to dictate all of the stuff, the opportunities, the people, who's going to go with you, what you're going to need. It begins to dictate those things. And without vision, we do a lot of stuff that's not in alignment with what we really desire. <clears throat> and I'm also big on writing because it's powerful. It makes it real and it makes it clear. It brings clarity. So we're going to have a planning session on the 30th. Share the broadcast out. Somebody else you know needs to plan their life and their business. I'm going to be teaching you how to create goals that matter, not only matter, but ones that actually manifest. And many of your goals aren't manifesting because they're completely out of alignment with who you are, who you desire to become, and what you desire for your life and your business. Because internally, your heart knows what's good for you. Your heart knows what's in alignment. And it's so difficult to do things that are out of alignment with what you truly desire in your heart. I want you guys to give yourselves permission to create a business and a lifestyle that you love and not one that you're frustrated by. Not one that you're looking at like, is this what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life? So the third, the second thing was, what is the task going to require? And we're going to be working on planning that out uh, on the 30th. So you got to join us. Number, the number three thing to consider, your top five values is everything. Somebody put everything in the comments. Listen, I know when I look back on my life, when it comes to relationships, uh, business moves, because I wasn't clear on what I valued, right, I would do things that they didn't even fit. I would, you know, connect with people that I didn't vibe with, that weren't good for, for my life even, because I hadn't made my top five values of precedence in my life, of top priority, so I build everything that I build based on my top five values and not, oh, let me fix my life because I built this thing and now I got to adjust my whole life around it. No, I adjust. I have my top five values and everything I do has to fall in alignment with those things. So my, you know, some of mine is time freedom, uh, financial freedom, uh, family, my, my walk with God. If the opportunity or the things or whatever it is, the folks, the event, if it's not in alignment with those things, I don't do it, right? And it helps me to stay in alignment in my life. It helps me to maintain my joy, my peace, my profits. Yeah, I don't hear me, right? And then the last thing is what's in your hand. Before you think about creating 50 different things, is there a coach, a mentor you've been watching for quite some time that's already available to you and you're still looking for this new thing like myself? If so, what you're waiting on? Or is there a class, a course that you've already taken? You've already gotten it in your email. You, you got the course sitting on your PC or your smartphone and you have not implemented, right? So one of the things that holds many entrepreneurs back is not that they're not seeking information, but that they're not implementing it. So those are four things to consider as you move into 2020. I pray that this has blessed you. If it has, do me a favor, share the broadcast out um, to someone else who could use this message and be sure to join us on Monday, the 30th at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a complimentary webinar 
uh, creating goals that matter, but not just matter, goals that actually manifest. If you guys have anybody got any questions before I log off, I pray that this blessed you. I will see you guys. It, I doubt it will be on Wednesday, but I might do a pop-up on Christmas. I'm going to visit um, my mom and family, and we got a few things planned. So, uh, But you guys have a super, super amazing holiday. Kiss the babies. Um, hug family. Love on yourself. Take care of yourself. If, it's, if your day is just consisting of reading a book or doing something that empowers you, one of the things that's super important, and, and I, I may come on on Wednesday, maybe Wednesday evening, because I have a broadcast I really want to share, and I just thought about it uh, now, but so many times we're building our life on tradition. So many times we're building our life on tradition, and it's not even the life that we really desire. So. Uh, grandma did it this way, or this is the way the industry does it. This is the way I saw the other person that I work with do it, or this person told me it needs... We're building our life on traditions that aren't true. They aren't working, right? They aren't bringing prosperity or peace or joy into our lives. And so um, I'll probably do a broadcast. I did do a post on it, but I'll probably come on at some point this week because... That broadcast has really been on my mind. Are you building your life off of tradition? And if so, how's that working for you? So I encourage you and empower you to um, step outside of your own box or the box that others have put you in. Give yourself permission to create the business and lifestyle you love. And then I share four things for you to consider as you move into 2020 as it relates to your business. Are you spending more time you know, trying to earn the money or grow? There's a time and a season for those. What task is required for the thing that you want? What are your top five values? And what's in your hand that you can multiply, that you can magnify, that you can maximize and produce more profits without necessarily producing more work? You guys have a super amazing holiday.